Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog Farmhouse on Boone, where I like to share my handmade home food from scratch and our simple farmhouse lifestyle here on Boone Street. Now today I have something a little different than what I've usually shared. It is my minimalist mom baby essentials baby checklist. Now, if you follow along, you may know that I am due with our baby in one week, and I also am one to keep clutter low and just things in general in our house. I like to have a few of them keep things simple and clutter free. So baby gear is no exception to that. So as a mom of four, almost five kids, I kind of figured out by now what it is that I actually need for a baby. And so this of course is my opinion and it can vary from person to person. I just wanna share with you what I personally find necessary and what I've prepared for this baby. As I mentioned, I am not one to store items and have a bunch of clutter in my house, so I don't have bins full of things in the basement because I find that usually I keep so few outfits for a child at each given stage that by the time they've outgrown it, it's pretty much trash anyway. It's stained up and just not good anymore. So because of that, I've just bought a few new things for this baby and the baby will in each stage probably own about three or four good pieces, wear them completely out, and then I will most likely have no use for them anymore. Let's start with the clothing. I have a few organic onesies from Burt's Bees Baby, and I will link below the reasons that we've chosen to go with organic on the clothing. But just some basics. We don't know if we're having a boy or girl, so I like to just do some grays and whites, and that is the theme of this entire thing, so that everything can mix and match. You don't have to worry about owning a whole lot. I just have about five onesies. And then a few simple sleepers, mostly these zip-up ones, all organic again, because zip-up sleepers are so easy to change in the middle of the night and things like that. I find that there are some very adorable clothes, but the baby's always sleeping and cozy, and so we don't really need any cute clothes when they're newborns. Basically just zippered sleepers and onesies. So sleepers are just easy, comfy, and no fuss. I only buy ones with footies because I do not like to deal with baby socks. They're always falling off and you're always losing them. So I don't really need to own any socks for this baby because all the sleepers have footies. Okay, as far as bedding goes, First, I wanna say that I have no crib and no bassinet for this baby. And that's because after four kids, I know exactly what I'm gonna end up doing, and that is co-sleeping. Obviously, again, a very controversial topic, so research that on your own. I'm not recommending it, but I am saying that is definitely what we do. For a good six months, the baby will sleep nowhere except for in bed with me. And so a lot of these things I don't even need yet. A couple organic crib sheets, just plain old white from Burt's Bees Baby. I really like their essentials line because they just have all of the baby essentials in organic cotton fabrics in neutral colors, which is totally perfect for my kind of minimalist style of baby gear. And then my other favorite thing, which I didn't find out about until my fourth, maybe third, but I'm thinking fourth child, are these muslin swaddle blankets. So I actually made these with some cotton gauze fabric and they are the best swaddle blankets around. One, they are lightweight, so no matter you know if it's really warm in your house, like it's winter right now, but we have a wood stove and our house stays really warm, so I still don't want the baby you know, swaddled up in anything that's too heavy. And what I like about these is they're stretchy and they're you can make them oversized. So when you try to swaddle a newborn baby even in a conventional flannel swaddle blanket, they are so tiny that you can't even get them tight. They're always just falling off and just not big enough. So these are awesome. In my blog post that I have for this, I will be linking some swaddle blankets you can buy. I also plan to eventually do a tutorial on how to make these super cheap. So I have a bunch of these made up for my last baby and I'll be reusing them. Now what I also like about these is they're so versatile. So with my other kids, I'd carry around like spit cloths and nursing covers and all of that. Well, I find that these, if I throw a couple of them in my bag, can be nursing cover 
It can, I can use it to wipe off spit. I'll just use this all day and then wash it. So really, this kind of cuts down a ton of different things in my diaper bag. Also, you could put it over if you're in a public place and you need to change the baby, you can lay it over the changing table. So I find these to be a very versatile baby essential. One heavy blanket. You need one heavy blanket if your baby's born in the winter or fall or maybe even early spring to put over their car seat when you go out. I again got this organic cotton cable knit blanket from Burt's Bees Baby. I just thought it was pretty and I like to have one nice blanket to go over the car seat. I should also note that I will not use blankets in bed until a baby is about two. The baby, like I said, will sleep with me for six months, but then after that, when they go in their bed, I still don't give them a blanket like this. We'll just stick with the organic cotton crib sheet. This is just for the car seat and stroller when we're out and about. As far as gear, this is gonna be pretty short section because as a mother of four and someone who's very stressed out by clutter, I just don't do a bunch of gear. So one, I have a bunch of older kids, so I can't put a baby in a swing and just leave them there. So I use a baby wrap and I started using baby wraps with my second baby and I thought they were basically life changing. For the second, third and fourth baby, they pretty much stay in that wrap all day every day until they're about six months old. Now six months, like I mentioned before, is kind of when I start to think about getting baby on a schedule and maybe laying down some in their own bed or you know during a nap but for six months straight I worry about no schedules and the baby goes in the wrap. <laughs> so this time I have this gray stretchy knit wrap from Sally Baby and I'm going to be doing a tutorial on tying this but I obviously need a baby first so I'm gonna wait till the baby's born but it's just basically a stretchy long piece of fabric. I put this on, put the baby in, they're cozy. I pull their head out if they're awake, I put their head in if they're asleep, they can see everything, hear my heartbeat, feel close to me, they're comforted all day so I can keep going about my work and baby is comfortable and happy. Highly recommend wraps, I absolutely love them. They are literally my number one baby essential. If I had nothing else, I mean I'm sure I'd have to have a couple things of clothing and diapers, <laughs> but it would be this. I love my wrap. I could not live without it. Okay, the next thing on gear is a high chair. Obviously you need a high chair. I don't use one at all until at least six months because my babies don't eat anything for six months. But around six months, they wanna start playing with food and picking things up. I like to have a high chair. I linked in the blog post a convertible high chair that can be used as a high chair and then later on as a booster seat that pushes up to the table. So I like that to minimize even more what you end up needing. Obviously a car seat. We just have a Chico key fit car seat. And of course a crib. Again, I don't have one set up yet and I won't need it for about six months, but obviously a baby essential for the checklist. All of these things are linked in the blog post so that you can see the collection that I came up with for my minimalist baby essentials checklist. In the diapering and feeding category, this post is in no way sponsored by Cotton Babies or Econobum, but I have bin cloth diapering for four kids and this will be my fifth and so I have found out exactly what I like, what leaks, what doesn't. I have tried pocket diapers, all-in-one diapers, and then the all-in-twos, and I've found a diaper that I love and that I will only use now, and that is the Econobum brand. I have a bunch from my last child in the one size. Those are great once baby reaches about 10 pounds, but this time, kind of just for fun, just because I was excited to buy a few things for baby since I hadn't yet, I actually bought some in the newborn size, so the way the Econobums work is they're basically just a waterproof cover. And the reason they're called Econobum is they're a budget-friendly option. So they're kind of the cheapest cloth diapers on the market. They're very basic. There's pretty much nothing to them. The way they work is they're just a plastic cover that snaps and you can put any insert on top of them. So I have some of these hemp ones from G Diaper. I have a couple of pre-folds. I have some flannels that I just made, some of the Gerber pre-folds, and then some of these microfiber ones. No matter what, it works the same way. You just take whatever you have and you put it on top and then just snap it. And I've never found anything that doesn't leak like this one doesn't leak. 
It's the only one where baby can be left in it for a couple of hours and not leak through. That's my honest opinion. And my sister is the same way. She cloth diapered and we both feel that Econobump is the best brand that we've found for not leaking. I have a stash of one size Econobumps just in plain white that is from my last child. They're still good and usable. And then I also bought three newborn covers just for fun and because I'm looking forward to cloth diapering my newborn. The other thing for feeding is bamboo nursing pads, so reusable nursing pads. If you've ever nursed before, you know that while your milk supply is regulating, you're gonna need those or you're going to need to pack extra shirts for yourself. As far as wipes go at home, I have a bunch of different little cloths that I use for reusable wipes. I just throw them right in the diaper pail with the diapers. So that makes it really easy. On the go, I just use some unscented wipes. For my diaper bag, Skip Hop was kind enough to send me this. And I personally picked it out on their website and I like it just because it's neutral, has a lot of pockets and it's a good size so I can fit my cloth diapers, couple extra outfits for on the go and my muslin swaddle blankets. This should cover me. It's not huge. Sometimes I have to pack things for my other kids too, like extra clothes or coats or something like that. So it's a perfect size for that. And I mostly liked it for the neutral colors and it fits in with all my other items. For bathing, this list is short. <laughs> we don't bathe our babies a whole lot, first of all. I can link an article below on why we don't even bathe them at all in the first 24 hours. After that, I simply stick to Dr. Bronnell's Castile Soap, which is just a coconut oil and a few other oil-based soap, all natural, nothing bad in it and I'll put that in a foaming hand soap container with some water and maybe a drop or two of lavender essential oil, and then that's it. That is all you need to bathe, baby. They don't need to be washed a whole lot. They're not really out getting dirty, and it's just bad for their skin. So a once a week wipe down with some Dr. Bronner's is all I use. So that's it for the bathing portion of this video. That's it. What would you add to this list? You can leave that in the comments below. I'm also gonna link the blog post, which has a lot more information on all these items, as well as the links and prices and all that kind of thing so that you can see my checklist. There'll also be a pinnable image so you could pin this later on Pinterest. If you're pregnant and you're looking forward to collecting some of these things but you're not quite ready and you just need a checklist, there'll be a pinnable image there to pin on Pinterest for later. Thank you so much for watching this video and stopping by my channel. I really appreciate it. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button. I share our handmade homes, lots of DIY projects and sewing and things like that. Food from scratch and our simple farmhouse lifestyle here on Boone Street. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.